Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Number 83. Here we have a frontal and a scapular Y view of the right shoulder. And the question is, what's the likely ideology of the finding shown? Is this sequel of tumor, infection, metabolic bone disease, or trauma? So if we take a look here, notice, first of all, that the glenohumeral joint is maintained, right? There's no acute fracture that we see. There's no dislocation of the glenohumeral joint. The humerus is articulating well and normally with the glenoid, and we see that here as well on the scapular Y view. Notice that the, if there was an anterior dislocation, the humeral head would be under the coracoid process of the scapula. If there was a posterior dislocation, the humeral head would be under the acromion process of the scapula. And we don't see any evidence of metabolic bone disease. The mineralization of the bone is adequate. I don't see any tumors. There's no soft tissue swelling or prominence here. The lung looks good. However, if we take a look, and this can be easily missed if you're going very fast, if you're reading the ED, uh, you know, you're used to reading hundreds of cases, notice that there is superior elevation of this clavicle. This clavicle is not articulating well with the acromion process of the scapula. Although there's no fracture, this indicates that there is, in fact, a acromioclavicular joint separation or an acromioclavicular joint dislocation. And then, of course, the answer here would be trauma, right? So this patient has likely had some sort of trauma that's resulted in an acromioclavicular joint dislocation or separation. So very important to uh, always assess the position of the clavicle with respect to the acromion process of the scapula on all shoulder radiography, right? If Again, if you're going too fast, you will and likely miss this at some point in your career, as I did when I was a second-year radiology resident on call. This was a case that I certainly missed because I was going too fast. Now, a chromoclavicular joint injury, it most commonly occurs from traumatic situations like a fall, a direct force onto the shoulder. This is very common in sports injuries like football, rugby, even hockey. Usually it's going to present with pain. You know, patients are going to feel that there is a problem. This doesn't typically present asymptomatically. And there is a Rockwood classification that I think is very important even for residents and students to understand. There are six types of injury or six types of AC joint injuries, type one, type two, type three, type four, type five, and type six. And the vast majority of what we're going to see are type two and type three, which I'm going to explain in a second. But a type one is when the acromioclavicular joint, or the, excuse me, the acromioclavicular ligament is sprained but not torn. So on x-ray, we're not going to see anything. There's no such thing as a type 1 injury on x-ray or radiography. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Now, on an MRI, you may see thickening to the ligament, uh, intermediate signal that suggests a sprain where it's otherwise intact and not torn. So on an MRI, you could call a type 1 AC joint injury, but on an x-ray and even CT, we would never suggest a type 1 injury, okay? Now, what you will call very commonly is a type 2 and a type 3, and the most common uh, types that we call on x-ray and CT would be a type 2 and a type 3. A type 2 is when the AC ligament is torn, which means that a chromioclavicular interval is going to be and measure more than 6 millimeters. That indicates that that ligament is torn. The CC ligament or the coracoclavicular ligament is intact, okay? So you just have an isolated acromioclavicular ligament injury. That's going to be a type 2 injury. A type 3 is when the acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligaments are torn. And you're looking at that interval between the distal end of the clavicle to the uh, most medial margin of the acromion. If that measures more than 6 millimeters, that means it's torn. Now, different, depending on who you read, different books may say 7 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 8 millimeters. I use 6 millimeters. And the same is true for the coracoclavicular ligament, right? We measure from the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula to the undersurface of the uh, clavicle. And if that measures more than 14 millimeters, that means that the coracoclavicular ligaments are torn. So a type 3 is when you have both the AC ligament and the coracoclavicular ligament are torn, okay? Now a type 4, type 5, type 6 are very rare. We don't call them too often. You won't, I would say 90% of cases we're going to call are going to be type 2 and type 3, but you can have a type 4, type 5, and type 6. And in all of these 4, 5, and 6, the AC and the coracoclavicular ligaments are torn. So Anytime the AC ligament and the coracoclavicular ligaments are torn, that means that it's a type 3, type 4, type 5, or type 6. But in a type 4, what happens is, is that 
the clavicle goes posteriorly. It, it, it goes posteriorly to the trapezius. So that's how we diagnose a type 4. A type 5 is when both the AC and the CT ligaments are torn, as I said. But it's kind of like an exaggerated type 3, when the clavicle extends superiorly, but so far superiorly, all the way to the subcutaneous tissues, almost coming to the skin surface. So I, I think of a type 5 as an exaggerated type 3. And then a type 6 uh, is, again, the AC and the corpus ligaments are torn, but there's, instead of superior displacement of the clavicle, there's inferior displacement of the clavicle, right? And that can be a problem because it can impinge on important structures, as you can imagine. So uh, that's a type 6, and that's rare. So the Rockwood classification is very helpful. We often call it type 2 and a type 3, which is why I put them in red. Uh, and remember that a type 1, we would never call an x-ray because no ligament is torn. Just the AC ligament is sprained, but not torn. So Rockwood classification, I think, is a very important classification that all residents should understand. And we should be able to call something, you know, type 2 or type 3 when we look on something on x-ray. And I think, you know, just some pro tips that I think are helpful when we're evaluating this, because this can be overlooked. You know, when you're down, if you're not sure if, the AC ligament is widened or the corpus interval is widened. You know, sometimes people can have different measurements, like in a very big person like Yao Wiming or Shaquille O'Neal, it may not be six millimeters, right? It may be like eight or nine millimeters on them, right? Because they're big people, they're big athletes, right? Um, it's often helpful just to image the other side if you're not sure, you know, you know, call the patient back and do one frontal view of, you know, the other side to see if there's a discrepancy between you know, the AC intervals between the right side and the left side. That can be very helpful in deciding if something is torn or not. And then also, you know, this will help you and prevent you from undercalling or overcalling certain injuries. Hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.